In this episode of the Misal podcast, you will hear my conversation with Sir Faraz Hussain. He is the co-founder and CEO of YPay, a savings and investment app for millennials in Pakistan. He talks about his experience building an investing app instead of a Robinhood-like stock trading app, optimizing the user journey of opening a brokerage account, and financial literacy around investing. Let's listen in. Welcome to the Misal podcast, Sir Faraz. How are you? I'm doing good, Zaid. Right? How are you doing yourself? I am doing extremely well. Thanks for joining me today. So last week I spoke to Senan De Souza from Investors Lounge. So I'm kind of a, on a same like you know theme in terms of topics. So why don't you just start by introducing yourself and tell me a little bit about your problem that you're solving and the product that you're building with YPay. So I'm I, I'm Sarfraz Shahid. Uh, I am the co-founder and CEO for YPay Financial. Uh, which is also an investment app. Uh, we are an investment app, uh, basically targeting uh, millennials and Gen Z population uh, because we believe that there is a, a larger gap to fill there uh, in terms of uh, personal finance and also avenues to invest and also awareness on where and how they can invest for the longer term uh, rather than uh, go to the moon and, and, and invest and uh, expect very, very high lucrative returns. So YPay is basically an investment app. It's uh, an investment aggregator, uh, covers a number of investment products. Currently, it's low risk, medium risk, and high risk mutual funds. Uh, we are uh, in the background working on uh, inculcating a lot of different investment products as well. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a one-stop solution for uh, a variety of investment products and also the other part that we see being neglected uh, on and on the part that uh, should matter in a, in a population like Pakistan where there is uh, a lot of young population fairly good access to capital but a lack of a, a general lack of financial literacy and I'm not just talking about the average Joe out on the street I'm talking about people who have graduated from from tier one tier two universities in the country so that's what we are trying to solve going out and talking to these people understanding their financial goals and uh, figuring out how they can save for the long term and invest money to achieve those goals. Was there a reason for you to be working on this problem? Like, was there something that happened that you felt like, okay, this problem really needs to be solved? And what is exactly your background that makes you like, you know, founder market, founder product? It's a pretty nifty, interesting story. Uh, I come from BB University, a local university in Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, my background is computer science, uh, primarily. So I don't have any, uh, seemingly, I don't have any uh, founder product fit. Uh, back when my, it was my final year, uh, I got a job offer. My colleague, my co-founder also got a job offer and we started working, uh, in our final semester, we were done with our, our coursework and everything. But when we saw around us, there was a trend that people were opening their bank accounts. People were applying for credit cards that they fairly do. But they didn't have any like uh, long term or short term plan on how are they going to save all of that money that's uh, that's coming in. So uh, we ourselves uh, we were interested in investing our our own money. Me and my my partner. So we started to look at different avenues here in Pakistan. Uh, stocks came up. Uh, stocks is the recurring theme. Whenever you talk about investing in Pakistan, you talk about stocks. So. Uh, Opening a stock market account or brokerage account in Pakistan is an uphill battle uh, for anyone who is listening to this and anyone who has gone through this journey. Uh, they can definitely relate to it. Uh, it takes uh, a few in-person visits, uh, some biometric verification, some paperwork to be processed, and uh, a, a, a leaf of a check checkbook uh, leaf to be deposited in person to the uh, to the broker or or the bank so it, it was a very like new process for us when we uh, still saw in the us uh, the kind of apps that were there the kind of uh, penetration that uh, the millennials there were adopting in terms of stock market investments and everything uh, when we talk about eToro or Robinhood or the apps it was a very like a, a 180 degree shift uh, to what was actually happening in Pakistan. After having that experience, we actually uh, set out, we sat down together, me and my co-founder, and we tried to understand that how, if we were to 
build something uh, in investments, how could we build it? So we tried to understand how can actually one build something, uh, some app or some platform in Pakistan to actually uh, make people invest or enable them to invest. So the initial idea was to create a, a, a stock market app that's uh, just similar to Robinhood. But when we went to the regulator here in Pakistan, it was it was a rather much difficult to enter into a stock market play. Uh, so, and at uh, exactly at that time, they were introducing the the sandbox initiative, the SEC in Pakistan. Uh, we sat down with them. We asked them. They told us their expectations. We told them our expectations, and we kind of sort of. Uh, matched our frequencies on on starting the mutual funds and eventually going on into other investment avenues. So this is how it came to be. Uh, we got our uh, sandbox approval in 2020. Uh, we conducted our sandbox testing in 2021 and we went live this year. So it was it has been a, a pretty long journey. And in that journey, we have... Uh, gather a team of people who actually have experience working in finance, who actually have working uh, experience in, in technology, the product, in marketing, and all of that stuff. So people kept joining in and we kept on like building momentum in course. Can you tell me a little bit more about the numbers in terms of like, you know, what's the, you know, what's the reception been like? You know, how many people have downloaded the app? How many people are actively using the app? And like, let's just say if I were to just sign up, can you walk me through the process, like how long it will take for me to be able to invest? So uh, the, invest, the user journey is, uh, so I, for myself, I am not uh, personally, still personally not satisfied with the user journey. Uh, the user takes, uh, it takes one day for the user to set up their account and start investing uh, in the same day. So what ends up happening is that you download the app, you put all your credentials into the app, takes about uh, uh, seven to ten minutes. Uh, you put all of your scans of your documents, the digital documents, and then our compliance team uh, just makes sure that everything is there. There's no garbage values or anything, and then it, all of the steps happen automatically. Uh, another verification and the uh, phone number verification and all of that stuff it happens in the background, and you're notified that hey, your account is open. Now we can start investing. So that's the customer journey. And uh, the other question was, uh, how how are the numbers? How how are the numbers? So we launched in March this year, and we have had very very uh, like. So personally, I feel that uh, we were not hoping for that good of a reception, but we have got like uh, uh, around five to seven percent week on week growth. Uh, it has been uh, very good in term in some days, and due to some macroeconomic conditions right now. It's it's pretty slow right now, but uh, we personally believe that the proof that we got in March and April, uh, we will get that back once the macroeconomic condition uh, stabilizes the market. So we raised our funding in, in December last year. Our first funding uh, is, that was uh, uh, an institutional check from an accelerator and a bunch of angel checks. And after that, uh, just uh, this June, we were able to close uh, a pre-seed from an institutional investor in Southeast Asia. Let me ask you this, like, so what kind of, you know, uh, people besides millennials, right? I, I get it. Millennials is like maybe the target market for you. But what other people have you seen signing up? Like, are there, you know, is there a business case or use case beyond millennials? Or is it just sticking to millennials if that's where you're going with this? So uh, when I talk about our uh, usual customer persona, it's uh, first and foremost millennials. And the second persona that we are targeting and we want to also target is the housewives uh, in Pakistan because the housewives in Pakistan have the uh, have been into uh, savings through committees or ballot committees or Oscars and uh, that stuff. So we want to uh, bring them on digitally and enable them to use their uh, digital wallets instead of their complete bank accounts and stuff like that. So the only hindrance has been the accessibility into the formal capital markets. So when we are solving that and we are uh, minimizing the number of steps, minimizing the number of paperwork uh, and 
making it as easy as if you are putting your money in a in a Roth fund. So why not do an investment rather than just put money uh, in someone else's pocket? When you talk about like team, like, you know, you have team, like you had people starting to join and all that stuff. So can you give me more insights into like, you know, what does the team look like? How big is the team? Is your tech outsourced in-house? Like, how does that work out for you? As you said, starting from starting from the technology, uh, we are a small team of uh, in-house developers. There are four uh, developers who have a fairly five to seven years experience working in, in startups and, and IT. So there are those. Uh, we have a product manager who, who is leading all of the, those uh, uh, engineers, taking requirements from growth and founders and customer feedback. We have a, a customer support team. Two people are always there in the office hours to answer queries and, and stuff. And if, if you have a query off office hours, we uh, make sure that uh, it is answered and catered to in the next working day. We have a few people on the compliance team, uh, compliance and operations team, which makes sure that all the data that is moving to and fro uh, between the asset management company and the payment providers is is the actual data and not some some garbage values or stuff like that. So, and uh, then we have people who are working uh, actively with us uh, uh, and coming up with what the users and the customers have feedback about uh, what should be there, or what additional things should be there, what things should we should not focus on, and what things should just have to go away straight away. So uh, I'll, I'll just an example on that, uh, we were recently working with Karandas Pakistan, uh, uh, and then we got uh, in touch with ID8 Innovation, which is a leading design agency here in Pakistan. So based on our customers feedback and doing live uh, user interviews idea was able to uh, uh, revamp all of our user experience journey and all of our user interfaces uh, and currently that is in production and will be launched uh, somewhere in september let me ask you this like i i know you mentioned a little bit of the regulations and all that stuff that you know that b- given the kind of app that you're building, the regulators will, of course, take a lot of interest in it. So besides the regulation, what's been your biggest challenge so far? So uh, the only thing that was uh, as difficult or maybe a little more difficult than the regulation was to partner up with with these legacy players, the asset managers that we are working with, that we are basically distributing their products. We, are, we don't have any of our products. We are basically distributing their products. And in a sense, we are we are a marketplace for investment products, right? So we have to partner with them. We have to take their consent to basically distribute their products to the retail market. So that was the hardest part, uh, uh, getting our first uh, asset manager on board, getting our second asset manager on board. Currently, we have uh, more than five asset managers on board, and we are uh, working very hard to bring their funds on back. In terms of technology, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a rather funny thing that uh, in terms of technology, when we talk about technology, uh, in, in especially in fintech, especially in Pakistan, uh, it's that uh, the, the the technology is when you see a lot of apps, we when you see a lot of payments apps or or, or other fintech apps so like personal finance or saving apps, the technology is pretty much uh, the same in all of those. Uh, the major differentiator in, in between these uh, finance uh, fintech apps is the, the 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 mode of distribution and the level of branding, the level of, of marketing, uh, and all of that stuff. So. Uh, I won't say the technology is easy uh, because there is a lot of compliance and a lot of non-visible uh, backend stuff going on. Uh, but technology is not the major uh, part of the problem in, in the print tech apps, especially in Pakistan. So another question, like a follow up to that would be like, was there something like, you know, you have a computer science background, right? So you you look at things from like, you know, a me- more mechanical, like, you know, this is a problem I need to solve this. And for you, like the default would be like, let's fix it with code, right? So besides like the usual things that people, you know, they have assumptions, right? Before you start something, you will have an assumption like, okay, this is how it works. What was that surprising thing for you while building the app? So um, up until recently, we were under the assumption that people don't want more risky things. Uh, they don't want to invest in more risky things. 
and that and we were adamant on that we, we didn't want to believe otherwise uh higher funds equity funds don't get those funds on board for people who are investing for the first time that was our our assumption and we talked to uh, like a, a good number of people around 100 people and we uh, saw the recurring theme that they want they are able they are open to take risks only if we tell them that that risk is like more risk and more returns they, that is basically what they want so that is the reason why pakistan adopted so quickly in in cryptocurrency uh and there's a such a high adoption for for uh, apps like binance or even the apps that are not legalized like like octaplex and other stuff so this is uh, something that was actually uh, surprising for us uh, the asset manager was also uh, uh not willing to believe that the these first time investors these millennials uh, or early and mid career professionals are uh, open to investing in equities through or in in more high risk or more volatile funds rather than staying sticking to the basics uh, going into money markets or cash markets and just letting their money stick so where the principal is essentially uh, protected or as good as protected so that was a major assumption that recently broke and now we are trying to move faster in terms of bringing more riskier funds and more riskier instruments on board for the people so when you say that like you know people were like you know high risk um, you know and high reward and all that stuff so and people were very like you know keen on uh basically adopting uh crypto and all that stuff so so at the at your as far as your app is concerned like do people invest money and let's just say the stock portfolio goes down or the mutual fund goes down do they like reach out to you and say like you know why is this why is my money going down or do they understand like what's happening oh uh, so uh, recently there there was uh, a few cases so what happens is that on the end of this year Uh, a lot of uh, dividend stuff and a lot of, of the pricing stuff happens in an asset management industry that's why the prices are like fluctuating like really they are not going down uh, essentially but they are fluctuating for like a, a few days maybe four to five working days so there were a lot of customers that came in they were like uh, where's my money how did it go and and we uh, while explaining to them we also learned a lot of new things so there's that the people don't want to lose their money people want to take risks and people want like much much higher returns so, like it, it kind of sort of like like gambling but with the uh, capital prediction uh, i don't know uh, so that is the the customer behavior that we have been seeing and uh, recently how the stock markets have been performing we have seen a, a, a much higher influx of people uh, come into our app uh, and we have seen a lot of customers becoming uh, repeat customers doing repurchases more and more uh, so let's see uh, if they are willing to stay or if the stock market uh, uh, rallies up again do they actually bounce off that thing so one question i have for you while you were talking that that i kept thinking about is like you know when uh, someone wants to invest like for example they want to invest 10000 rupees right so does that money get deducted from their bank account and come to your bank account or like or, or how does that like back end work in terms of how quick it is like what what I'm, my question is like how quickly if i see a stock and if i see a price can i like once i invest is it instant like how does that process work oh so when you make an investment it's it- Uh, so in 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 funds and mutual funds, it, it, the price doesn't change mid day. The price doesn't during the day. It changes once the day is is done with. So at the end of the day, the price for the new day and everything is then. It's kind of much kind of like gold. Uh, so it changes day to day. So when you place an order uh, on our app. your money gets deducted from your bank account and the money gets put into the account that in of the asset manager so basically there is an asset manager and one asset manager has let's say 20 funds right and all 20 of those funds are displayed or distributed through our app uh, and all of those 20 funds have uh, 20 bank accounts so when your account is being credited 
So the money goes directly into the bank account for that particular fund or that particular product that you're investing in. Uh, the money is there and the uh, uh, confirmation comes in at the day end, uh, the 5 p.m., the standard cutoff time, uh, when the price is, is set, it's static, it's done. I mean, if uh, one were to invest, like it, it does take some time for like the transaction go, to go through. So, okay, that, that's all well and good. So my next question for you is like during this entire process of where exactly are you making money? Are you making money on a transaction by transaction or are you making money some other way? So there are uh, quite a few ways that uh, asset managers make uh, money. And why I'm mentioning this is because when we go to an asset manager, our pitch to the asset manager is that... Uh, uh, hey, uh, you have been doing this for almost a decade now or more than a decade in, some, in terms of some uh, asset managers, but you have not targeted the, the, the young population, the millennials, and uh, we have that population, uh, a, a fairly decent number of that population, and we believe that if you market your products on our platform, you can benefit from small from a lot of small ticket sizes. So that is our pitch to the investor, and we say that since we are unlocking a new uh, uh, customer or uh, customer persona, a new target audience for you, we will charge you uh, essentially uh, based on whatever you are making. So let's say you are making uh, money on a transaction, we'll charge you for that transaction. If you are making money on managing that money, the, the asset under management uh, of our customer, we'll charge you on that management uh, fees as well. So you, you basically, most of your uh, fees is related to whatever the asset manager is charging you. Yeah. So basically you're, you're taking a percentage cut from that yeah exactly so we are not charging anything from the customer so if the customer goes directly to the asset manager and, and makes a transaction uh they'll pay the same amount uh, if they were to make the buy pay so there's no additional charges for using like so um before i let you go one last question i would i have for you is um about like where do you see yourself going like in, within five years ten years like what's your north star metric as i said like very early we want to become a one-stop solution for investments uh it can be all kind of investments so uh REIT is being tested out in in the sandbox right now we are much aware of that we are working with the sandbox committee we are talking to them we are in contact with them and uh read might be a very good option because people have have a, a, a psyche of believing real estate much more than anything else uh digital gold is in the uh in the pipelines so it might come out and we might actually be uh, there as well so the actual thing is that uh, so we want to bring in people into savings investments and then provide them with uh, a lot of uh, different uh, avenues to actually save and invest their money, create goals, SIPs, and save for, for that time. So when we look at countries like uh, different countries like India or China or Bangladesh or, or, or uh, countries in Southeast Asia like Malaysia and Indonesia, we see that these countries have been investing even before the advent of uh, these uh, apps like uh, uh, Ajay or Stashaway or, or, or Grow for India or different apps scattered away in all the parts of the world. But the catch is that Pakistan uh, is still stuck on pre-technology uh, investment ratios. For example, let's say Pakistan was a uh, few decades ago, Pakistan's investment to GDP ratio was 16%. Uh, Pakistan's investment to GDP ratio today is 15.9%. Uh, whereas uh, countries like India, the investment to GDP ratio has rose because of uh, the ad ad advent of, of uh, fintech apps. Uh, people are using those fintech apps and there's a lot of retail penetration into the Bombay Stock Exchange and stuff like that. So the reason that our, so our hunch is that the reason that our uh, investment to GDP ratio is lacking is because uh, there, honestly, there are not a lot of uh, active retail investors out there to the market, uh, whether it be PSX, whether it be Pakistan Open Tech uh, Exchange, whether it be mutual funds or any uh, other regulated investment for that matter. 
Sounds good. It's it's funny that you it's funny that you didn't say you want to be the next uh, Robin Hood of Pakistan because I would think that's where you would be going with this app, right? Because you're trying to increase the number of people that invest in the stock market, um, as well as maybe provide like a basically stupidly simple way to invest in stock market too. So that plus like, okay, I know I said I listened to my last questions, but question, but one more question. Um, so is it so it's possible, of course, for you, for you, uh, for you know anyone using the app to invest in Pakistani stock market? Have you looked into how they can also invest in like other markets outside of Pakistan? Yeah, that's a very interesting question because we are actively working on that. Uh, so I would tell you uh, that we are working on U.S. stock. Uh, we are re- not working on something. Uh, we are working on researching how can we actually bring U.S. stock markets to the people of Pakistan on a map. So a lot of people of Pakistan have uh, their uh, U.S. bank accounts or or PayPal accounts or stuff like that. So for them, it's the U.S. The more U.S. markets are accessible. U.S. markets are accessible for anyone. Uh, who can actually put their money, who can actually get their money there. So the only hindrance is how the money travels to U.S. and then gets invested into NASDAQ. So that's what we're working on, how the flow of transaction is going to work. And uh, it's, a, it's, again, a regulation regulatory challenge. It's not a technology challenge because a lot of B2B players are actually offering you services to uh, take your stock from them and put it into your app and start with it. So as soon as we are done with the regulatory side of the puzzle, uh, we offer your <clears throat> stocks to into the investment portfolio of YPay as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing the insights about YPay. It was a pleasure talking to you and thanks for being on the Missile Podcast. Thank you so much, Zayed. Thank you for hosting me and it was likewise a very good experience talking about all this stuff. Thanks for listening to the Missile Podcast. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and will thank me by writing a review or sharing it on social media. Make sure you follow and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Thanks again. See you soon.